Hey guys, welcome to the session by K21 Academy. We are going to talk about what is DevOps and then we are going to discuss the important AWS DevOps services. So DevOps is more over a philosophy or a mindset or the way how you take your product or application or whatever the website you are designing and taking that website or product so that millions of people can use it, right? So this entire process has a variety of ways that you can go with. DevOps skills are in huge demand. DevOps professionals are the highest paid ones in the IT industry. So there are lots of DevOps services which are inbuilt with AWS and in this session, we will be looking at them comprehensively. After this session, you will be able to start off with AWS DevOps independently. Also guys, before moving on with this session, please subscribe to our channel so that you will never miss an update on our upcoming video. Now let us take a quick glance at the agenda. Under the DevOps section, firstly we will get introduced to what is DevOps and then we will try to understand the agile practices in software development. Post that, we will get to know about the difference between agile and DevOps. And then we will see why is DevOps important. And then we will try to understand the DevOps lifecycle and the DevOps cycle flow. Post that, we will go through various concepts in DevOps. And then we will try to understand the DevOps tools. Post that, we will be learning about continuous integration and continuous delivery processes in which your development team involves frequent code changes that are pushed in the main branch while ensuring that it does not impact any changes made by the developers working parallelly. And then you will be learning about the benefits of continuous integration and continuous delivery. And then we will go through one of the use case for Facebook. And finally, we will be learning about continuous testing, continuous testing tools, continuous deployment and continuous monitoring. Under the AWS DevOps services section, we are going to look at continuous integration and continuous delivery tools. And then we are going to have a look at microservices and then we will be looking infrastructure as a code. And finally, we will be looking at monitoring and logging services. So we have taken a clip from one of our certification training program on AWS Certified DevOps Engineer Professional DOPC01. And in this clip, our expert will talk about DevOps and important AWS DevOps services. So DevOps is all about how different teams, that is developers and operations, how they can interact together, how they can work together, and how you want to then to collaborate together so that you can have the applications release faster with minimal uh, issues when it goes to customer. That is what this DevOps is all about. So there are different teams, operations team, development team, and Agile is all about the different practices which you follow for your software practices, starting from creating a code, uh, doing a unit test, that is a unit test means doing the code test of what you created a code. Then you do an integration at once, which you integrate to your uh, GitHub, then testing. So first one in Agile, what you do is you first create a code using tools like Git. I'm talking about before this come in, uh, Git and came in, you normally in uh, enterprises, you create some code and then you do a unit test to check whether the code works fine. You integrate with all other users. For example, if you have a team wherein multiple people are working on the code, you integrate the code by doing a pull and push and those things, integration. And then you do an integration testing to check whether the code is working fine. Then once the code is integrated, you want to build it. Build means you're going to compile the code and check whether it's working fine. This is your, like using a Maven tools, you do a build and you check whether the flow is correct, that is your code is working fine, the workflow is working fine, you do all the steps for the Agile. Now what happens in Agile is, Agile is not much into aut automation. It is not much into doing the work together. This is where DevOps is coming, wherein you want to have a collaboration between the team members. It includes the operations team, development teams. It gets in the automation, for example, uh, tools of uh, Ansible, Docker, Kubernetes, and also more of a Git, where you can integrate on, on your system and work offline. All these concepts where it came with your DevOps. So DevOps and Agile goes together. So DevOps is not when different uh, teams you want to work, you want them to work in, in here. So using DevOps, 
companies have seen lots of uh, changes. First one is they're able to make the changes faster for customers. Second one is they are able to also understand where is the mistakes and they can go and troubleshoot. And you achieve this by collaboration between the different team members, that is your DevOps. So development team is always worried about the change and there's one stability. Now, since they're going to work together, this is wall of confusion between them is completely closed because of the DevOps practices. So DevOps practices start from all the cycles, from pushing the code, running unit tests, for all these things you have in your DevOps. So for all these things, you can use your DevOps practices. So for example, when I'm pushing the code means I can use tools like Git on my local, I can push to GitHub. And I can use a unit test like JUnit using which I can do a test of the code. I can store the outputs of everything in artifacts. Artifacts is a location where you store in the build outputs of a comp compilation. And using that outputs, you would provision the environment starting from a test, dev, uh, staging, and then you go on to a production. And during the staging, which is your pre-prod, which is exact replica of your production, you would also do a performance test. So normally your performance test is done in your staging. And once the performance test is good, wherein it is running, it is saying that it is working fine, there is no much of load, all is fine, then it released to the customer or the production. This is how the cycle is. And for each and every stage of this, you have in different tools. This is your DevOps cycle. So DevOps cycle is the product team or the pre sales team, they would get the requirement of what is required for the application to be deployed. So they pass on the requirements to the development team. For example, all the teams would be involved, but again, development team, you want, they would create the code using tools like Eclipse or Visual Studio. They use these tools, they create the code. And they work offline using the tools like Git. They work offline. So they get in the code, they download the code on the system, they work offline. And once they are done, how do they share with others? They push it to GitHub. And from GitHub, you can have in Jenkins or other tools like Bamboo, using which you can do a build of it. And after build is done, test all this thing along with it, either you can use separate tools or the Jenkins, and you can do a deployment of it using the Dockers, Kubernetes, Chef, Puppet, done, and then the monitoring. So DevOps is all about these continuous development, continuous integration, continuous uh, role integration, continuous testing, continuous deployment, and continuous monitoring. All these still have not so many continuous, but normally these are five things we're talking about. You also have continuous management, talking about like using like Jira tools, first management tool, lots of tools out there. So continuous development means you are developing the software continuously. It means that you are going to do all the checks before it goes to the next stage, your continuous. And continuous testing, you do all types of tests. So in your environments, normally you do a reverse testing, wherein you just write in the code, you would test it, you get some error message, then you go and modify the code. It means that I want to do all the tests in the backend. That is what the job is all about. And once it is done, you integrate the code with all other changes during integration, you Jenkins, and deployment, either you can use a CI CD pipeline or separately in deployment, you can use tools where you want to go and deploy it. In Amazon, for example, you want to learn about code deploy and want to have monitored. Monitoring is very much important to maintain the SLA. How does, uh, how do you maintain SLA? If something happens, how do you do it? You want to use some monitoring tools. Is all are the five cycles of DevOps. So there are lots of tools. So for your Git, you can use Git or SVN. SVN is wherein you do a central repository. You don't have a copy on local you want to use Git. Build tools like Maven and Gradle. You can use uh, tools for analyzing the code. You can use for tools for testing like uh, JUnit or JMeter for performance tests, uh, Selenium and JUnit for your uh, per functional tests. For CI CD, you can use Jenkins, Bamboo, Travis, lots of tools are there. And for deployment, again, you have lots of tools, config, all these are tools for deployment, config management, and the monitoring. So it depends on your requirement, which tool you want to use. But in general, if you are new to uh, uh, De DevOps, 
you normally start with in general git and github is preferred if not some people use uh, git bit bucket but all these tools would be work with git git is very much so on it always works with git so git is quite widely available for anything you want to use and again jenkins is very much easier because open source we're going to learn about what are these so continuous development is all about how team members can work efficiently anytime from their systems so in, for example if there is a team they have a repository in a github center repository so the team members can work offline by using git tools that is they say that i want to pull in the latest changes they can do a pull or do a clone or and then once they're done they can push it back to your central repository is your continuous development so you have different tools on this again git other ones tfs other ones so git is widely used so git is widely used so you have git and uh, github these are the tools so git github and bitbucket and for continuous integration, you use tools of Jenkins and delivery. So what is continuous integration delivery is? Integration is how developers can commit and make the changes. So as soon as you commit to a central repository GitHub, it can do a build immediately. That is your CI. And your continuous delivery is all about how you can create a pipeline. So for example, we're talking about so continuous integration is I can commit to a code commit or a GitHub and I can have it will be built immediately using your Jenkins. And continuous delivery is I can do all these things. But remember, when you do a continuous delivery, when you want to push it to a production, normally you want to do a manual approval. So you can define jobs for each of this and you have pipeline to another continuous delivery. So continuous integration is this, continuous delivery is that is your Jenkins. So in enterprises, you want to use CI and CD very much, wherein it helps you to integrate the code and also make the release management quite faster. And these are benefits of using your CI CD. So whenever you make the changes, it's going to build immediately. That is a smaller code team immediately going to do it. So because of the smaller code changes you can go and understand what was the best next you can debug it and make it remediated and you can easily resolve the issues fast releases these are the uh, reasons uh, of using a cs you can use any tools like jenkins or uh, code pipeline which are going to learn about code commit repository all these things this part of the ci and cd these are reasons now there are lots of tools in the markets yeah so you have jenkins you have Jenkins Serverless, which is coming up recently. I have not exported Jenkins Serverless. You have Spinnaker, Team City, all these are various tools. So, which tool you want to use is all based on use cases. For example, Jenkins is all open source. You can own it for free and you can use it all community support. This comes with additional charges. So, any of these tools could be used. So, these are use cases. So every company, any company, bigger company, every company, they make the changes. So for example, uh, use cases of Facebook, every company they make the changes in the backend and then they release to the front end. For example, if you get an options like uh, beta versions, beta version means, it means that they're testing it first. So when they release any exam, they probably always release the beta version. And once they give access to promotion users, they get, they take in the feedback from them and then they modify it and then they release to production. That is how what is DevOps is about. All the work in the back end you want to ensure it is done and then release to customers. So it's called an example is something like a dark launch technique. That is how you can use CICD. So towards testing, you can either use separate tools or you can integrate all these tools with your Jenkins. And Jenkins, you can integrate all these tools and you can easily work with your testing tools. So you have tools like Selenium, these things for specific to uh, web applications or you can use JUnit, lots of tools are there. So in develop deployment, you're going to use all these tools, the over deployment, and then some monitoring. So all this is supposed to use. But now you have to understand when you are going to set up all these things on your own platform, it would take in uh, more time, more uh, not very efficient, and lots of uh, work you are supposed to do. 
this is where you want to use something like your cloud devops tool so these are all the options so instead of you doing so much of work you can manage them much more easier and much more efficiently and much more securely using your cloud devops services so for example there is lots of ci cd tools you can use this like code pipeline very similar to your jenkins you can do a build and test code using uh, tools like code build you can deploy your applications back to your instance for example back to your ec2 instances or to lambda services using code deploy and you can manage all these things the project using code start so it makes the work quite easy the first efficient and you can have unlimited repositories you can have uh, unlimited scaling capacities on a cloud and hence you want to start using your devops aws devops tools now the next one is we are going to learn about uh, services or microservices of uh, using containers and dockers so instead of you managing the containers and dockers for example when you work on on prem you are supposed to manage the docker manager and uh, the uh, manager component for a cluster you have a cluster called as ecs using which you can easily work with your microservices of containers and you can also create your serverless applications using a lambda so you need not go ahead and create your infrastructure and uh, uh, the complete one you just say that i want to have a code to be created on a specific language like python or c sharp and you can have your application up and running in a few minutes this is your lambda you're going to get into it so next one you want to understand very important is something called infrastructure as a code so what is this so for example let me give an uh, so you have something called as cloud formation uh, template so what i can do is i can write in my configurations of my ec2s or my vpcs all these things in a file like this and i can upload it it is going to create your configurations or the components using these files this is called as infrastructure code so I can either write in individual components or I can write in a complete VPC, everything in a code, and I can upload this file. And that is going to create my configuration or my environment. That is called as infrastructure code. So you can either write in using a JSON or you can use something like a YAML format. Cloud formation is very specific to AWS. We're going to look into de detail on uh, in the third module. So I can uh, I can create the code and they can upload as your infrastructure code so we are going to deep dive into cloud formation so let me give again some examples i'll go to services of cloud formation let me talk about it so formation is about you can create your code and you can upload the code to s3 and then you can get in the output so what you do in your cloud formation is let me show you a simple example I go into management console. We're going to deep dive into this. I'm just showing in here on a high level. I'm going to show you. So I go to cloud formation. So if you want to create my environment like a stack, I can choose a sample template. For example, I want to get a LAMP stack. So I have this template. So let me open this template. This is how you choose the template. So this is the template, what you are supposed to write it. So you, you can write in a template like this, which will have the template details about what is LAMP. LAMP means Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP or Perl in one specific EC2 instance, I can deploy it. How do I do that? I need to write in the code, all the configurations, whatever I want. I put in this file and then I upload it. So whatever is there in this, is going to create the resources, it's going to create your mappings, it's going to create your uh, parameters, all those things are going to get created and it's going to give you the output. This is how infrastructure code works. So this is a high level thing, this is how you can do it. Other one is I can also use a designer. I can use a designer and I can drag in the comp, for example, I want to create something like a cloud friend or something, I can just write and create this, I'm going to write in the code in the back end and I can deploy this code. So you're going to write in the code backend automatically and I can deploy this. This is how you work with your 
cloud formation, for example. Azure, back and you're going to uh, get into more into that. Second one is OpsWorks. So what is OpsWorks? Uh, you might have heard about uh, Chef, okay? Chef and Puppet. These are tools which is going to help you to manage a bigger environment. But if you have thousand servers, how do I push in packages or software applications or deploy something, my network devices, anything? I can use Chef. But working with Chef is very difficult. You need to use Ruby language, all those things. So using OpsWorks, you can work with Chef in an easier manner. Yeah, that is yours. We're going to talk about in detail of it as your Chef. But you can deploy on your EC2 instances, that is Chef OpsWorks. So config management is for how to work with this. Now, you also will going to learn about how do you manage the configurations? For example, if you have 1,000 servers, how do we know that what configurations you are running on your environment? How do we know that the configurations are quite safe? Is it has any compliance against it? So you can use uh, tools of config, or if you want to manage all the components together, you can use system management. For example, on Apache environment, you want to run in some specific commands, something the SCCM, something like that, you can use systems manager. This is your configuration for checking the configurations of your environments. And you're going to learn about CloudWatch. CloudWatch is all about monitoring your services. So every service in Amazon is going to get monitored in default. So if you get EC2 instance, anything going to get monitored by service callers, Amazon CloudWatch. So CloudWatch, the service which can monitor your services. And how do you know who logged in, what changes were done as your cloud? Pay? Let me just show in a very brief about what, how does this look? So I go back to Cloud Watch. This is my Cloud Watch. So once I have some resources in this region, for example, I can create a dashboard. So I can create some dashboard and say that like a broad service. And inside this dashboard, you can see that how do you want to say metrics? You can define the metrics, for example, on the metrics. And you can add in your services. Whatever you want to monitor, you add in the services. So just one second. This is a parameter, just add it in here. There which is. So, like this, I can create my dashboard. And once I'm done, I can go and create alarms, notifications, all these things in your cloud watch, region specific. So in whichever region you have resources, you can go and allow them to be monitored by creating a dashboard, adding a metrics and create alarms as a cloud watch. Now, what about who logged into services? For example, if you want to know who accessed the services, what did they do and when did they do what did they do? All those things, the service call is CloudTrail. So CloudTrail is going to track each and every user who use this account. For example, when you log into this account, you will see that what time I logged in as a user, what did I do? What is the source IP? Everything I can do this. And I can, I can see the logs in, in here. Uh, and I can see the view trails. Is see what's the question? Uh, uh, Steve, want to talk? Okay, that you want to create something called as trail. You create a trail. So in a trail, for example, I would say that trail of today's date. Okay, and I want to configure all these re reports of a specific region or all the regions. So since I'm Mumbai is going to record all that is done in your Mumbai region. Organization means, for example, if you have multiple Amazon accounts, you can have all these accounts managed under one thing called as organization. That is called an organization. So I do not want to use that. So I can define read, write, log, what I want to record. And I can put in my S3 bucket name. So I can put my S3 bucket name where you want to push it. Then I'm going to configure it. This is how I can configure It's going to create the logs. This one. Apart from this, you can also create a push to your CloudWatch. So you can also create a group 
and click on continue and you can allow this logs to your cloud watch so either in a cloud watch or in your s3 you can see the logs of it this is how your cloud works yeah so cloud is all about how it is going to have your resources who locked in what they do all those log files or the trail you talk about trail means it means that someone has left something uh, hidden in the back end. Those is your cloud trail. It is not only for a console. You can it's going to record a lot. It's done in your API or using CLI. All this being done. This is your trail. And X-ray is a service which will analyze your deep analysis of applications of microservices, for example, or distributed applications. For that, use X-ray. So it's normally used for your Lambda functions. Or your microservices, which requires deep integration uh, monitoring, is done by X-ray. So this is your three services. And we talk to Elastic Beanstalk. Elastic Beanstalk is all about how we can create a web application quite easily by just getting the code and creating it. It could be your Apache, Nginx, Passenger, IAS. So you can just get in the code, upload the code, choose the platform, and have it done. And you get a complete access to the environment. So all the services we are going to deep dive when we come into specific modules, which we are going to learn. And your code commit is your replacement of your GitHub. So in GitHub, for example, it is something GitHub is managing it. So how can you secure it still more? You can have in the repositories within your Amazon account. That is your code commit. And code build is wherein you need not go and create your build service. You just define some specific steps and you can have the build to be done quite easy as your code build. The compilation and testing. And code deploy is where you want to have these core source files or build files to be deployed. Back, you can deploy it back to EC2 instances or you can back to a Lambda or to ECS containers you can deploy it. That is your code deploys. All these are managed services. And how can I integrate all these things together? I can use pipelines, say in the Jenkins pipeline. So you can define the build, you can define continuous in here. So we have put down everything about the certification, including the basic concepts that one should know everything like introduction to DevOps and cloud, software development lifecycle automation, configuration management and infrastructure as code, and monitoring and logging in AWS, policy and automation in AWS, incident and event response, high availability fault tolerance and disaster recovery. So in this 12 week roadmap, we take you from basics to advanced level along with the tips and resources for clearing the certification exam. We also have a separate team working for CV preparation and on job support. So if you want to become AWS certified DevOps engineer professional and want to learn right from basics to expert level, then we have a comprehensive step by step training for you that includes hands-on labs, including exam preparation, and most important part, one year on-job support. So if you are interested in this program, then I would highly recommend you to attend the free class, which covers most of the topics like DevOps with AWS and tools, continuous integration and continuous deployment tools, AWS Elastic Beanstalk, infrastructure as code, and many other topics. So if you are interested in this free class, you can visit k21academy.com slash AWS DevOps 02.